So in today's world, it's pretty rare for there to be quite a lot of hype surrounding the launch of a fountain pen, and to an outside observer, it might be a little bit weird seeing a whole community of people getting really excited for the launch of a fountain pen, but every now and then, the moons align with the stars, and as the prophecy foretold, a pen would be brought into this world with some amazing qualities. We saw this hype for the launch of the Twisby Eco and the launch of the Wingsung 6. 98 and both of those were brilliant pens. So after using the Moonman M2 for about a month now, let's finally review this pen. So the Moonman M2 is a brand new fountain pen coming from China and it's fitting into a growing range of fountain pens that actually cost quite a bit of money, more so than the $2 that I'm actually used to paying for Jinhao fountain pens. Like the Wingsung 698 and 601, you're going to be paying about $15 to $20 for these pens. This one here with an extra fine nib I purchased for about $15 plus shipping. $15 is actually quite a lot of money for a Chinese fountain pen. So what does Boon Man actually bring to the table to make this pen worth the money? So first of all, the thing that probably stands out is the aesthetics of this fountain pen. And aesthetics is something that I don't really touch on all that much for a Chinese fountain pen because most of them don't make you say wow or anything like that because most Chinese fountain pens are very bland, very uninspired, and a lot of the times their designs are actually copied off a lot of other existing fountain pens. However, this one here is a very unique and actually looks like to be a design that they've actually come up on their own. And this one is absolutely beautiful. Very beautiful um, flowing curves. And this one is actually shaped like a torpedo. It's a little bit more pointed than your regular cigar shape. And it doesn't look generic at all. And as someone who actually likes demonstrated pens, and I mean, I really do like demonstrated pens given my past history of fountain pens, this pen is actually really beautiful and almost a work of art. It's not a Visconti, but for $15, it is really beautiful. Another thing that I like about this fountain pen is the inclusion of a proper box. And this is something that is actually really rare for Chinese fountain pens because usually when you buy a Chinese fountain pen, you'll be gifted the pen in a cheap plastic sleeve and that is pretty much it. This pen, however, comes with its own box and this box is actually really high quality. It's made from frosted polypropylene and it feels very high quality. In fact, it feels pretty much like a bigger version of the Twisby Eco box and I am super impressed Impressed. Considering that for $15, Parker will give you a really crap box with the Parker Vector and Parker Jota, I am really impressed what um, the Moonman M2 comes in. Upon opening this box, what you'll see is a rubber insert that has been coated in this velvet-like material. And in the rubber, you can see that there are cutouts for the fountain pen and an eyedropper, because this pen is designed to be an eyedropper-only pen. Believe me, I have tried to attach cartridges and converters to this pen, but there is no nozzle or anything like that for actually attaching converters or cartridges. Because this pen has been designed from the ground up to be an eyedropper fountain pen, it means you won't have to worry about anything such as corrosion or this pen possibly leaking. And as well as that, the included o-ring is very well hidden by the threads of the fountain pen, which means it doesn't draw away from the aesthetics of the fountain pen. Something that happens when you use an o-ring on a pen that isn't really designed to be um, eyedropped. But like everything in life, you're going to get pros and cons with using eyedroppering as your method of filling up your fountain pen. And its pros are pretty simple. You're going to get a giant ink capacity because eyedropping a fountain pen is probably going to get you the biggest amount of ink capacity out of any filling method. And I measured this filling capacity to be about three milliliters. And that is really, really big. To put it into perspective, a standard international converter will give you less than a mil. So this is three to four times the incapacity of a standard international converter and with an extra fine nib on this fountain pen I was able to use a full barrel of ink in about a month and that is pretty amazing considering when I use a fountain pen as an everyday carry pen most of those pens will need refilling once a week maybe even more. The only con of it being an eyedropper fountain pen is that it's really tedious to clean and change the ink in. And yes, you will be doing that about once a month and you'll only be doing it more if you do choose to change the ink more often. But when the time does come to actually needing to 
oh, I dropped this fountain pen, it is really tedious, especially when it comes time to cleaning it because this nib is actually threaded. So you're gonna to have to unscrew that and then a little housing with the nib in it is gonna come out. Then you have to remove the nib from the housing and clean those separately. My point is it is a lot more tedious, but the trade-off is you're gonna be doing it very rarely. So finally, let's talk about the specs of this fountain pen. So capped this fountain pen is 138 millimeters long, uncapped is 124 millimeters long, and posted it is 153 millimeters long. And in terms of the weight, it's about 15 grams posted and 11 grams uncapped. And those weights aren't including ink. So at about three grams for the ink. So in terms of ergonomics, I really do enjoy using this fountain pen. So first and foremost, I use this pen unposted. Reason being is while this pen does um, post, I don't wanna really risk this pen getting scratched. And yes, there are light scratches building up where this pen um, posts. So I really wanna try avoid that in the near future. But if you do choose to post this pen, this pen does post securely. There is a little bit of a step up where the pen posts, but there's nothing uncomfortable about that. I've used this pen both posted and unposted for long periods of time, and they're both very comfortable. In terms of the section of the pen, I really do enjoy holding it because they haven't done anything fancy with it. It is very straight and at the very end, it is rounded off and filleted and that makes it very comfortable to hold and it should be comfortable for a lot of people to hold. It's a very thick section and something that is really enjoyable to hold. As I've said, I've used this pen for over an hour in writing and it is just very comfortable. The only thing that I don't like about this is there is certainly a small step up and while it's not that bad I can feel it when I am writing with it and as well as that this grip isn't really resistant to oils so after about half an hour of use you need to wipe this um, section or it's going to be very slippery. Another ergonomic issue with this fountain pen is concerning the lack of a clip on this fountain pen. And I can see why they chose to do this. And it simply boils down to, it would ruin the lines of this fountain pen and ultimately just be a con in terms of the aesthetics. And all that really means is if you ever use this pen on a surface that's not perfectly level, just beware that the pen will certainly roll about. And as well as that, it means you can't really clip this into your um, pockets. And for that reason, I would suggest just keeping this pen in a pen case. And anyway, I'm gonna recommend that you keep this pen in a pen case anyway, because you wouldn't wanna scratch this fountain pen because being a clear demonstrator pen made from plastic, scratches are easily noticeable. And moving on to scratches and the material, let's talk about the material of the body of this fountain pen. So this fountain pen uses acrylic for the body of the fountain pen and acrylic is actually my favorite material for fountain pens to be made of in terms of plastic fountain pens because acrylic is actually a much stronger material in terms of tensile strength than ABS and it means that this pen here is really strong and every time that I try to test it for its strength, you know, um, the simple bend test and everything, I feel that this pen is incredibly strong. It shows no signs of of feeling that it's gonna break or anything like that. It is really, really well made. And in terms of resistance to scratches, it has done really well. Considering that I've just chucked this in my bag a few times where you know, I've had keys and everything like that. When I've forgotten to put it in my pen case, it has survived really well. This is a really well made pen in terms of its materials. But this pen certainly isn't perfect and it does have some problems. And the first problem is it's very easy for you to scrape the nib on the inside of the cap when you are putting the cap on the pen. And that's not really a big issue. You don't have any possibility of getting ink on the grip section or anything like that. But when you do do it, it does distract from the aesthetics of this fountain pen. And it's just saying that they could have avoided by making the hole a little bit bigger. 
And also, while not a big issue, you can still tell that this pen has been Chinese made and Chinese designed because the holes at the cap and body of the fountain pen, you can easily tell that they have been drilled with a standard drill bit. The taper at the top is 118 degrees and that just shows that it is a standard drill bit and I don't really mind that, that's how you do things. But the issue is that when they drilled into the metal mold, it obviously left scratches in the mold and they didn't take the time to actually sand those scratches out. So if you look really carefully, you can still see the um, scratches from the drill bit in the mold and obviously deposited from the mold into the fountain pen. I don't think other brands such as Parker or Pilot would tolerate something like this. They request that the mould be sanded and all the marks be removed. So let's talk about the nib of this fountain pen because no matter how good the body of this fountain pen is, at the end of the day you do have to write with these pens and they always need to have a really good nib. So the Moonman M2 uses an uncustomized number five size nib. An uncustomized being they've gone for a generic nib and they haven't taken the time to put their branding or logo on it. Though this one has an extra fine nib, but you can also buy it with a fine, medium and stub nib. And I would have gotten the stub nib if they shipped it to Australia when I purchased this pen. But unfortunately at the time I couldn't find someone who could actually ship to Australia. But I certainly would have gone for a stub nib because a lot of reviewers are saying really good things about the stub nib. Um, at this price point, this nib is obviously going to be a steel nib and apparently it has an iridium point, but um, for some reason I don't trust that. So let's talk about how well this nib writes. And for an extra fine nib from China, it's not bad. I'd say it's maybe average or above average. The way that I grade my nibs is I hold the Wingsung 3008 as the standard. That is probably the best or at least the smoothest extra fine nib that you can get from China. And I always say that my nibs are either better or worse than that. And the way that I compared the Wingsung 698, a more expensive Chinese fountain pen, to that pen, a really cheap Chinese fountain pen, was the 698 was very fun to write with, even though that its nib was a little bit more scratching. The 3008, however, is cheap, but it's somewhat bland because there is no flex to that nib. The way that I'd say this nib writes is sort of like the Wingsung 698. It's not perfect. There is certainly a little bit of resistance or feedback in this nib, and you can sort of expect that from a lot of mass-produced extra fine nibs. And that's not bad because remember, I have used this fountain pen for long periods of time, um, writing samples over an hour long, and it really doesn't bother me all that much. But the cool thing about this nib is while there is a bit of feedback, you can squeeze some very nice line variation from this nib. Um, this nib does flex. It is really hard, but when you do apply pressure and you slow down, this nib certainly can provide some nice contrast between thick and thin lines, which makes it really fun to write with. But if you're trying to take uh, notes, you can certainly write with this nib pretty fast. In terms of reliability, I think this is a pretty reliable pen. This pen doesn't really hard start on me, and when I start writing, it never skips whatsoever. And in terms of wetness, this pen is average for an extra fine nib. You don't really get gushes for extra fine nibs. This one is average. You can pretty much write on any type of paper, both coated and uncoated. It works really well. The only criticism that I have for this nib really is, well, the feed system as well, is that this pen does burp every now and then, and that's when you get a pool of ink at the bottom of the nib, and Usually when I get burping on fountain pens that have cartridges, I mean converters, I'll always just suck air back into the converter and the ink and that will usually solve it. With this, it doesn't really work. Usually my remedy is to either hold the pen upside down like this for about 30 to 40 seconds and that will usually solve the burping. And if that doesn't work and if, or if I'm in a bit of a hurry, all I'll do is simply just get a tissue and just blot up the ink and it will fix it really easily. All right then, welcome to the writing sample. This time we're going back to Rodia. So we have the Moon Man. 
M2. This has an extra fine nib, and the ink that we're using is, I hope you can see it, Monteverde. This is, uh, what's it called? This is Ocean Noir. Let's get into a writing sample. All right then, a little bit more of a wordier and lengthier writing sample. This is a lovely quote from the first book of Paradise Lost, a pretty amazing book. And let's talk about the writing because that's what we're here for. So as you can see, very flawless. There was no issues with this pen. And I don't know if you heard it, but there was certainly some feedback. There's very little writing sample. There's very little flex in this. There's very little flex from the writing because this is a pretty stiff nib. And what can I say? Very reliable. For whatever reason, my camera decided to stop recording, but there you go. Let's just jump into looking at the characteristics of the nib. So in terms of natural line variation, in terms of the nib grinding, you're not gonna get much. The side strokes are pretty much the same as the down strokes. In terms of line variation, this is a stiff nib, but you can squeeze line variation out of it. So that's with no pressure. And let's slowly build up. As you can see, there is some flex in this nib, but flex it too much and the pen, the nib will railroad. So no pressure and a lot of pressure, and you do have to take it slowly, but you can get some nice um, contrast between the thick and the thin. So, just doing it a regular. You can see that there is really nice um, contrast to give, but you gotta take it slowly. For most everyday, for everyday writing, you're not gonna get much um, line variation or anything like that, but you can squeeze it from this nib. In terms of wetness, as I said, it's about average for an extra fine nib. Not particularly wet ink this, but um, it is an extra fine nib. I don't know what you'd expect, um, if you'd expect anything else. In terms of reverse writing, Reverse writing is always really good on Chinese pens for some reason and really bad on European pens, but um, reverse writing, really good on this fountain pen. In terms of actual um, writing, let's just, in terms of writing quickly, let's do some quick writing. This um, skip here was actually my fault. You can see I actually cut into the paper. If you look at it really quickly, but uh, look at it really closely. But apart from that, it was really good. It keeps up really well. And that's pretty much it for the writing sample. <laughs> 
So in conclusion, for less than $20, I think this is the best looking fountain pen that you're probably going to pick up. This is pretty much the Visconti of the cheap fountain pen world, considering that other Chinese fountain pens are very uninspired, and a lot of the cheaper fountain pens that are offered by brands such as Platinum or Pilot or anything like that, those pens also look very bland, so if you're looking for a very aesthetically pleasing pen and not wanting to spend too much money, this is probably your best bet. Another thing that I really enjoy about this fountain pen is the fact that it is an eyedropper. I've never actually owned an eyedropper fountain pen that has been made to be an eyedropper fountain pen, so I think this is awesome for me to get a little bit of exposure into the eyedropping um, fountain pen side of the community. And as well as that, if I was going to buy this fountain pen again, or if I'm going to recommend you guys get a fountain pen like this, if you're not dead set on getting extra fine nibs, maybe buy this nib with a medium nib or a stub nibs. Looking at other reviewers' um, take on this fountain pen, I think the medium or stub nib would be really cool because they say those nibs are really, really fun to use.